In this video I will be reviewing the Secure SQ-SW3 Capacitive Discharge Spot Welder. To summarise, if you need to spot weld battery packs on a budget without compromising on the quality of welds, then look no further. There is a link to purchase the kits in the video description. Kits range from $199 to $238 US dollars at the time of filming. The kit I have includes two types of spot welding electrodes. The SW3 spot welder uses two large supercapacitors for energy storage. The capacitors can be charged up from a LiPo battery or the included power supply. a foot pedal, a heavy duty set of leads with copper electrodes, another set of leads to use with the WP30 handpiece, two sets of copper electrodes, an 18650 cell holder and a sample of nickel strip and some hardware and tools. Last but not least we have the WP30 handpiece. At the rear are two set screws which adjust the spring tension of the electrodes. Above that is an input jack which powers the LED lights and when the handpiece is pressed initiates a spot weld. One of the best design features of this unit is the independent spring loaded electrodes which ensure good electrical contact even when the handpiece is on an angle. Alright, let's connect everything up and power up the spot welder. When you first power up the unit, it may take 2-5 to five minutes to fully charge. After that, the unit seems to quickly recharge after each weld. I found the menu system intuitive and easy to use, which is good considering there was no instructions included and I couldn't find a manual anywhere online. You'll notice there are two pulse settings called Pulse 1 and Pulse 2. There are several benefits to dual pulse spot welders, but without getting into too much detail, the first pulse is shorter and its purpose is to preheat the metal and remove surface oxides. This prepares the metal for the second longer pulse which melts the metals together. In a nutshell, dual pulsing produces stronger welds and reduces the risk of burn through. When it comes to settings, you'll have to experiment since the manufacturer doesn't provide any guidelines for setting these values. For my first welds, I'll be using pure nickel strip that is 0.1mm thick. Although the strip is firmly welded to the battery cell, the weld was too hot and partially burnt through the strip, so I'll reduce the pulse time for the next weld. This produced a solid spot weld without burn through. I then moved on to spot welding 0.2 pure nickel strip. It took me several attempts to dial in the settings but ultimately the settings on the screen produced very strong welds. On the WP30 handpiece, the leads can be connected to the front or at the rear depending on your requirements. Connecting the leads to the rear will mean there is slightly more resistance in the circuit, 
So if you are doing very heavy duty welds with thick nickel strip, you'll want to connect the leads near the electrodes. The spot welder is also capable of producing multiple welds consecutively and quickly tops up before I'm ready for the next set of welds. Alright, let's move on to using the handheld electrodes with a foot pedal. The advantage to this type of welding is the user can decide the distance between the electrodes. Here I'm using the same 0.2mm nickel strip with the same settings as before. And the quality of the welds are very good. We can see there is enough current here that the leads repel each other. Pretty cool. Alright, now let's tear down the unit and see what makes the spot welder good. The rear cover has a direct connection to the supercapacitors, so whatever you do, don't short these contacts or you might meet your maker. I tried to find out the model of these supercapacitors for more information, but unfortunately the model code is mostly obscured by the bus bars which I can't remove. Removing the display screen PCB, we find 5 MOSFETs which switch the power going to the electrodes. Each MOSFET is rated for 393 amps continuous or 1440 amps pulsed. With 5 in parallel, we're looking good for durability here. One thing that caught my eye was the rather ugly looking weld connection between the bus bar and tab on the supercapacitor. I reached out to Secure for a comment, and they said that according to their tests, this quality of weld reduced the manufacturing cost without adversely affecting performance. To verify this, I also watched a couple of other YouTube review videos which also featured similar quality looking welds in this location. So I don't think I received a bad unit, it's just how they're manufactured. In summary, in terms of the quality of spot welds produced, it's top notch. Every bit as good as the K weld I reviewed a few years ago. However, there is one advantage over the K weld in the fact that the SW3 is ready to use out of the box, while on the other hand the K-Weld requires the user to supply their own high current power source. If you'd like to purchase an SW3, there's an affiliate link in the description which helps support my channel by giving a small kickback to me at no cost to you. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.